Hey, what's up? Howard Jacobson here with sick to fit Today I want to show you two ways that you can screw up your New Year's resolutions by demonstrating it with this wood stove. And a quick reminder, if at the end you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to this channel if you'd like more like it. That's a lot of likes. Okay, so here's one way that people screw up their New Year's resolutions. They think, I got a match and I got a big piece of wood, that's all I need. So all I got to do is strike the match and hold it up to the wood and then the wood will catch and I'll have a fire. All right, obviously this isn't working and it's not going to work. So one way to screw it up is to think of the match as your spark of motivation, of inspiration. And taking that spark, no matter how brightly it burns, and trying to light a great big habit with it, a huge fundamental change, it just doesn't work. And people try this all the time. They'll make a big New Year's resolution and say, well, this year I'm going to go to the gym five days a week. This year I'm going to not take a drink. And it's such a big shift that it just doesn't catch. Now I'm going to light the fire using paper. So paper is better than a match because it's going to give me a lot more flame. See that? I'm just going to put that there and it is going to catch my big logs on fire. Obviously, that also doesn't work. And what's that like in terms of New Year's resolutions? That is creating a New Year's resolution that is completely unsupported, that doesn't have any sort of structure behind it. There's no structure to the paper to allow it to grow, to allow it to sustain itself on that day when you get up and there's ice on your windshield and you don't feel like going out, or you don't want to go for a walk, or you feel bad at the end of the day, you just got to have a drink. So another way that we can screw up our New Year's resolutions is by not supporting them with enough structure and systems to make sure that they actually catch and ignite into our everyday life. So now let me show you the way I would do it. And we're going to use these two big logs, these two big habits, and they form the base. So the vision of what you want, the behaviors you want, the way you want to be in the world, that's the base of your new habit. Then we've got to have something more than a match and we have to have more structure than a piece of paper. So what we're going to do is we've got a couple of fire starters. We're going to put them right here. One, two, just right there between the two, propped up. And then we're going to build a little cage around them, a little, uh, a little fence. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to light the two fire starters. They are going to burn for a while and at the same time they're going to burn and catch the frames that I built around them. And that's going to be enough to then put a bigger piece of kindling on. And this is going to catch. And at that point we have enough mass that we've incrementally step by stepped the fire to the point where eventually it's going to catch and the two big habits, the two big logs on the bottom are going to burn as well. So let's do that and then I'll talk about how to apply that to habits in your life. So the first thing is we only chose two big logs to start. If I'd filled up this stove with logs there would be no room for the rest of the stuff, there wouldn't be enough air flow to get it going. So pick one or two habits at the most. Don't do a kind of clean sweep of your entire life. One is actually better than two, because once you get this going, when you get one going, then you know you have a fuel source for others. Second thing is, what's your fire starter? What is something that you can set up in place, a smaller version of the big habit? So if you want to go to the gym five days a week, let's say your small habit is maybe you're not even getting out of bed right now. So the small habit is just getting out of bed by seven every single morning. If you know you're going to have to do that to get to the gym, do that for a couple of weeks and establish that as a non-negotiable. You can even get back into bed. Maybe the next step is you drive to the gym, you touch the door handle and you drive home and that's good enough. So we want to make sure we are creating small enough bits here 
that each one can catch, can ignite the next one. Let's say you want to stop eating sugar completely. Maybe the small habit would be no more Ben and Jerry's after 8 p.m. Don't sit down with ice cream. Maybe have an apple with some peanut butter. Maybe have some crudite with hummus, right? Pick a small bit of it. So if, just like these big logs are the same as this, but just cut into small pieces, you can build your habits incrementally by cutting them into small, easy pieces. And the smaller they are, so you can see those, those little sticks are what I first used. The smaller they are, the more likely they are to catch and the more likely they are to catch the next bigger habit along the way. So step it up in small, easy to achieve increments. And the third thing is you want to create a structure of support. If I just took all that stuff and just threw it willy nilly into the stove and lit it, maybe the fire lighter would burn, but it wouldn't necessarily be near the logs. So we want to make sure we create a structure. So what might that structure look like for going to the gym? It might mean having a gym bag already loaded the night before. What about the uh, evening eating? Maybe it's you have your apples on the counter. You have apples and peanut butter ready. You always have a bag of crudite when you get home from the supermarket. If you have uh, some cauliflower or broccoli, you cut it up and put it in water or put it into a a see-through container so you're making it easier for yourself to do the habit. So the structure is ways in which you are going to make it easier for yourself. And one way to do this, sometimes it's hard to, to think about that. Sometimes it's hard to brainstorm what would make it easier. The, the trick to this is ask yourself, what would make it harder? If I wanted to make this near impossible, what would I do? Gee, I'd probably take my keys and I'd uh, hide them in the back of the garden. <laughs> so what's the opposite of that? Put my keys somewhere right where I'll have them where I want to go. Uh, if I wanted to make hummus really hard, I wouldn't have any in the house. I'd have to go out shopping for it. So make sure you have it in the house and just do the opposite of whatever makes it hard. OK, so now it's time to put this other little log on. And we'll come back in a little bit and hopefully I'll be able to show you a roaring fire of two positive habits. As you can see, the fire is blazing. I did have to go and put in a couple more logs, move things around a little bit. And of course, it's going to go out if I don't keep feeding it. So there's no such thing as a habit that you're just done with. It's just dialed in forever. You always need to keep feeding it because life changes, situations change, your motivations may change, your systems, your schedule may change. So you always want to be tending it. Sometimes I take a little air out. Sometimes I add a little air back in. Sometimes I go and poke around. But at this point, it's really easy to keep the fire going. Remember, it's hard to start but it's easy to keep going. So where, where you are now, starting that new habit, make sure you start it in steps, build structure, and when you get to the point that it's blazing, it won't take much to keep it going. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.